What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Creative Hunter Podcast. Thanks for hopping on today. Um, this is your host, as always, Logan Romney. And uh, guys, thanks for hopping on the podcast today. It's just going to be kind of a quicker one and just going through um, a few things and kind of going over um, a couple things about um, portfolios and websites and things that I think are valuable um, that can bring a lot of value to you and possibly help get you more work in the future. But um, first things first, there's kind of some cool things that have happened the last week in um, kind of the industry that I wanted to um, bring up and talk about. Um, just kind of for fun, these are just things that I'm excited about and I think you guys might might enjoy as well. Um, I shoot, as some of you guys know, the dialed archery site. I've got it on my bow right behind me right now. I've, had, I've been running that site for a little bit over a year now, and uh, I've loved it. So I've killed an elk with it. I've killed a deer with it. Um, the site has never really had any issues. Um, they just released a new, a brand new, whole redesigned site. It's called Proof, and uh, that was released yes or today i guess as i'm recording this podcast so that's pretty cool um i haven't really had a ton of time to check it out yet but i like some of the new features that it has on it it's got dual sight tapes so um i don't really know exactly the the their ideas behind that but something that came to mind is like well i could shoot like two different arrow setups and have two different sight tapes for both arrow setups like that's pretty cool um, I can have a heavier arrow for like a maybe an elk hunt or something, or and then a lighter, faster arrow arrow for a deer hunt. But that's just something that's super cool. Um, there's a couple new films that came out this week that you should definitely check out if you want to kind of see some of the the new films coming out in the industry. Um, Weatherby just released a film on New Zealand, and Kobe Owens, a good buddy of mine, filmed that, edited it. He's the one, he, he works over at Weatherby full-time um, doing a bunch of content for them. Um, that one's really good. I would highly recommend watching that film if you got a sec. Um, the other one that's a little, little bit shorter, which is probably, if you don't have as much time, check out Hunter McWaters, his Blacktail Hunt. Um, it's the Hunter's Quest is his channel. And uh, he shot us like a Boone and Crockett Blacktail and a uh, super awesome hunt as well. So that's a film. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, so right now, kind of the reason this topic came up, I'm working on a new website for just some, just for myself and for kind of the agency, the, the creative hunter in general. Um, working on getting some products up there, maybe some apparel and stuff um, over the next couple weeks. Um, but we've been working on some, some products that are going to be super beneficial for hunters and uh, just excited to, to get those out. And I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop as those get released. And uh, we'll do some podcasts on kind of the uses of those and of those products that I'm gonna be releasing. And then uh, just kind of keep working on that. But anyways, that's a topic for another day. It's totally different. So I'm working on a website right now. Um, what uh, I kind of drew some inspiration from a couple different websites, um, and some of them are in the hunting industry, some of them are not really in the hunting industry, and I just kind of um, brought them all together into one website that I've created. And uh, it's not totally live yet, but it will be probably pretty soon. Um, I the reason that you want to have a website, um, it's it's kind of interesting these days because most of your portfolio is going to be on social media, on Instagram, um, places or on YouTube, you know, places where a lot of times, especially in Instagram, like that content is probably going to get seen once in people's feeds. And then unless they're going to your page and scrolling through and checking things out, um, they're not going to see, they're not going to see what you want them to see. And they're not going to see the full uh, spectrum of your work. That's where a website comes into great play because um, having a website, you're going to be able to um, just curate what you want that customer to see, that client to see um, before they make any assumptions about your your work. So 
um, when you, when they open up that website, you've got a clean looking homepage and you, they can go to photo galleries or a video gallery and just see kind of like all the stuff that you've done. And you can really put your best work right at the top of that rather than on Instagram where you have, you are continually posting stuff and some of that best work might kind of get buried, um, uh, down into the, the feed and most people aren't going to go scroll through a ton of your Instagram. Um, the other thing is to be super aware about is when people are looking at your Instagram, it's important to make sure that you're, um, you have good quality content on there and you are um, being professional. You're not posting stuff um, that's going to degrade your, um, your self image because when people look through your Instagram, I know there is, um, I know of examples of people who didn't get hired for jobs because of the stuff they were posting on their Instagram. So, um, there's not, I'm not, there's nothing stopping you from posting whatever you want to post on Instagram, but just know that some things might hurt you, um, in the long run, if you're posting things that maybe don't line up with certain values of brands or, just things that uh, that might make you look like you're not as, not as professional or not taking things as seriously. So making sure that um, you're very conscious about what you're posting on Instagram is critical, but um, having that Instagram and that website side by side for networking and showing your portfolio is really important. So for a website, um, most of the time you don't really have to do anything super expensive and super crazy. There's a couple of different websites that you can use and there's some kind of pros and cons to them. And I've used a few of these. So the two that I've used the most is Squarespace and Smug Mug. What's really nice about Squarespace is that it's a little bit more customizable. You can kind of uh, make your page look probably a little bit better, um, in my opinion, than you can with Smug Mug. But Smug Mug has some features like, um, like, uh, like I don't know if it's unlimited or it's like a huge amount of, of online storage that you can upload like raw photos to. So if you really wanted to, you could upload all the raw photos from a trip into Smug Mug on, and then and you have that online backup and it's full res and you can download them whenever you want to, wherever you're at. The other thing with Smug Mug is it's a it's really easy to deliver um, portfolios or uh, to clients after a shoot. So um, you do a shoot, you take those photos in Lightroom or whatever, you edit them up, um, and then you can upload those into a folder in Smug Mug, and you can directly send that folder to the client, and they can access those photos and download them. And it's a really easy way to um, deliver photos to clients. That's mostly what I use, either that or I do sometimes use Google Drive, but what's nice is Smug Mug is like unlimited storage, so you don't have to um, pay for extra storage online when you're when you're doing that. And then you always have that folder there, so if the client ever for some reason loses the link to that, you can just resend it to them, um, no problem. Um, I don't think um, that that's a huge feature that's even available in Squarespace. Um, but Squarespace, like in my, like I said, in my opinion, has a better layout. They have a, a easier shop to use. So you can, if you're going to sell products or prints or something, it's easier to sell those um, in Squarespace. Um, Squarespace, I think is a little bit more expensive to use, but you also just have some more um, quality um, gadgets and things that you can use in the uh, in the like website, right? Um, so there's pros and cons to both, and for a long, but for most of my time, I've had my personal website on Smug Mug because of the photo sharing capabilities. And then you can make a pretty good looking website on Smug Mug, and you make it look nice and um, really professional. But I just think you can do a little bit better on Squarespace. But there's there's just the, there's the give and takes to each one. Um, now, besides that, like um, laying out your website and making sure that it's easy to use and super simple, but you still get the point across of like, this is my work and this is what I can do for you. Um, so 
most of the time I'll have a photo gallery and then I'll have a, a section for, for my video work and it'll have links to all of those videos that will take you to like the YouTube video, YouTube page, um, and then they can, people can watch those videos there. It's also a good idea if you're doing video work is to have, like it's probably every year to make a little, uh, it's called a, a reel, it's not like an Instagram reel, it's basically just a couple minutes long um, showing all of the work that you've done that year and a, a nice edited together um, little video that just shows a bunch of the cinematic clips, however you want them to make it and use your creativity. Um, that way if a brand comes onto your page or a client and, and wants to just see like something quick of the work that you can do, they can pull that up real quick and they can just see an, a little overview. And then with the photos, you can have um, a, a page with a, with a bunch of photos or maybe a couple galleries if you're going to do a couple different um, types of photos or photography maybe you're, you're doing uh, maybe you want to do like a backpacking portfolio um, or something and like a different or like a couple different like portfolios just don't try to do too many you don't want to overwhelm people when they come to your website you just want to kind of have your best work laid out for them to see um, the other thing that's important to have on the website that I feel like people miss, especially in this industry, is some sort of call to action or like a contact page. So um, even on the home page, like having call to actions, um, like click here to work with me or something like that, that's just like going to get people to to click that and send you an email and uh, ask for for if, if you're willing to work for them. Um, some of the other things is like, I wouldn't put things like pricing on your website. I'd have, I'd make sure that brands reach out to you and um, you give them pricing. The reason that is because different brands may have different budgets and depending on, on where their content is gonna be going, um, it's probably gonna change the pricing for yourself depending on, on what that brand needs. Um, that's a topic for another day that we'll have to get into sometime um, because pricing is a big deal but it's also pretty hard um for first time for for people getting into the the freelancing industry to kind of figure out and uh and that's okay everyone goes through it everyone figures it out but uh everyone has their different opinions as well but anyways um so so websites so websites are great um definitely should be thinking about having a website now do you need a website to get clients and get work. Not really, you actually probably don't need one. Um, I can't think of any specific examples where someone um, looked at my website and hired me off of my website. Um, I have got emails from people um, off of my website that um, haven't turned into jobs just because of the timing or anything like that. So I guess I, I, have, been, I have gotten work technically from, off of my website, but it's, but it's kind of like going from Instagram, to clicking on the website link, to finding my email, to shooting me an email. Um, but I have had people where they've where they've asked about hiring me, and then checked out my website and been like, "Okay, this guy, like, I like your website. Like, let's let's do it. Let's, let's hire you." So the website has helped, especially on certain clients, to get work. Now, not all clients are going to even think about looking at your website. A lot of them are just going to see your Instagram page, and. Uh, a lot of the work you get is going to be from other people um, um, reaching, like other people that you've worked with in the past, um, word of mouth. So other people that you've worked with in the past telling people like, hey, this guy's a good photographer, you should definitely hire him. Um, that's I, I get a lot of work that way as well, but um, you still want to make sure you have that portfolio and you have that work um, lined up so that people can check out your stuff and, and, uh, and see it. Um, some of the things with like a uh, Instagram portfolio. So let's talk about Instagram for a little bit. Um, and on Instagram, like photos don't do as good as reels do. And uh, I think everyone kind of knows that, um, reels just do better. And it's, I think you should definitely have reels in your feed as a photographer. Um, maybe it's a reel like showing you taking pictures of something or something like that. Um, I also think it's really important to show some of your personality in your social media because people are going to be hiring you to come film their hunt for like a week or 10 days 
and they want to make sure that you're someone that that, is, that, that you're going to be someone they enjoy hanging out with. And so showing your personality, it's not only going to help clients like see your personality and how you interact and react and, and interact with people, but um, it's also going to help your engagement as just in, in Instagram, like people like to see raw um, videos from people and their emotions and and stories and just your personality and, and show yourself. That's going to help grow your brand a lot. If you just look at, think about all of your like favorite influencers and probably most of their videos, like they're talking, telling stories or doing something that... Um, is totally expected um, of you that they are going to do and whether it's joking like they're making they're doing something funny or they're um, just whatever type of content they're posting like normally you kind of you kind of already expect it because they've already said that that's like their personality that's their their brand their page and that's what they do so kind of set that for yourself and try to think about like what do you want to show people on your page and in, in your portfolio it's going to set you apart from everyone else and it's going to um, make people want to hire you over other people. Um, with anything with your portfolio and networking, you kind of, you really want to think about that. Like what's going to set you apart from other people um, in your content or in on your website or your social media page and why are you different than everyone else and why should people want to hire you over hiring the next guy in line right so um with that stuff guys um that's just kind of a short little deal about portfolios that are um that i thought you guys might really like and it might actually just just help anyone out who's just getting into it and um kind of thinking about wanting to start start a website or build their instagram um and if you have any questions definitely um, let me know. There's also a ton of people who would love to answer your questions as well. I've got, I've I, like pretty much anyone in this industry is pretty cool. Um, and uh, especially in that like photography um, video side of things, a lot of people are just super chill. They're, they love to answer questions. I know I do. And a lot of my buddies do as well. Um, so uh, over the next uh, a few weeks the next few weeks I'm pretty dang busy so next week the Idaho rifle deer hunt starts um, I've got a really nice buck that I got eyes on last week and I actually got to 45 yards with my bow and the wind swirled and the buck busted out and I never got him but uh, I kind of know where the buck was hanging out and he was there for a couple days in a row so I'm hoping that I can go back in there and that, that buck's going to be right where I found him. Um, heading out to scout for a day this week just to see if he's still there. And I hope he is. We'll see. But uh, that hunt starts next week. And then I'll be hunting that through the weekend. And then my wife has an elk hunt that starts the next week. So I'll be hunting that. Um, after that, I think I'm going to film a hunt in Wyoming for some guys. And then literally the day after I get back from that, I'm doing another, uh, my brother-in-law has a rifle deer tag in Idaho. We're going to hunt for the last um, week of October. So I am like super booked, super busy. I got a lot going on. Still have to get all my schoolwork done for the rest of the month. But um, <clears throat> we're getting it done and uh, working on it and it's all good. So still going to have podcasts coming out every week though. Still, uh, still making it happen and uh, getting some guests on. Um, this week to line a few up for the next few weeks so that I can take some time off. But uh, yeah, other than that, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, I kind of threw this one together pretty quick, but it's uh, something that I've worked on a lot and thought about a lot. And I uh, uh, hope I didn't really miss anything that uh, is super important that I thought about. But um, Thanks you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a, a great week and a great hunting season. We're getting into just that middle of the hunting season now. Rifle hunts are starting up here and uh, it's pretty exciting. So thanks you guys for watching and we will catch you guys.